behind me is Adams Lake, up on the Hayfield Lakes complex near Doncaster. In about an hour's time, the peace and tranquility is going to be shattered because this place is going to be thronging with some of the country's top match anglers because this is round two of the Kresagamakatsu UK Angling Championships. In the lead, great yeah. start from round one. Nice, nice to be back. Um, like I say, after a year out, it's good to be back. Good first round. Just need to try and get another point on the board today. Put myself in a good position for uh, obviously round three. Local venue for you, Andy? Yeah, it is, Rob. Yeah, uh, local venue, uh, great venue as well. I must. Uh, I just think it's the perfect sort of venue for a round at UK Angling Champs. I really do. Well, Kaylee, back for round two, and you had a brilliant start last time out. Yeah, it was awesome. Couldn't have got off to a much better start, to be honest with you, Rob. One point is what I wanted, what I went for, and I managed to get it, so happy with that. Do you fish here much? Not really. Um, it's not too far for me, but it's a venue that I've never really come to very much. Probably been here three times on open matches, and every time I've been, I've drawn within four or five pegs of, where, of each match, so I've, not, you know, I've never really seen the venue as such. Where do you think it's going to be one from today, then? Conditions are a bit tough. Yeah, we've had a lot of rain, haven't we? A lot of rain's come down and uh, it's cold. It's with a cold northerly wind blowing on it. Uh, that's one good thing about Airfield. You never, ever know where it's likely to throw the winner up from. There's a lot of pegs capable on both lakes, both on Ireland and Adams. And uh, it's difficult, but I think the end pegs are going to be favourable, as they are on a, on a lot of venues. But it does hold some big fish. They're all big fish. They're all quite educated fish. And... Uh, I think there's going to be a few surprises along the way today, I really do. It's great to be in that leading pack, but what does today hold? Do you fish here much? Um, I fished here quite a lot last year. I qualified for the ladies' fish show, so I spent a lot of summer up here. And I've got it in my head what I want to do, and hopefully if it goes to plan, I'll come away with another point. So, so let's have a look at the complex. This is Maver Dynamite Hayfield Lakes, and it's situated up near Doncaster in Yorkshire. Now, it's a really interesting complex of lakes, and it's known as the Wembley of competition fishing. A lot of the big event finals are held here. Match This and also Fishermania, they take place here. And the UK Champs, of course, is one of the big four events throughout the course of the year in the UK. The complex itself is split into two lakes. The one behind me here is Island Lake, for obvious reasons. There is a great big island in the middle of it. And the other one just behind the track over there, that one is Adams. Now, Adams is really interesting because it's one lake split into two by a spit running through the middle and a small cut through. Now that cut through is a really, really popular area. Lots of people like to fish in that area. And back in the day, the old Fishermania finals used to be held on there before they moved away and then came back to go onto this lake. Island Lake behind me. Well, the island is the obvious feature. That's where lots of anglers want to go. And there's a pirate on the corner. That's a really, really popular peg. Whoever gets the one over there, they are definitely in the running. Last year, though, was really interesting because it was the bottom end, the area that doesn't normally produce record weights. That was the area that came first and second. So you know what? You never really know which end of the lake is going to fish the best. There's an awful lot of fish down here at the moment. The weather is absolutely fantastic up here in Yorkshire. We had a bit of rain earlier on, but this area is really interesting because it's very flat and you get lots of swirling winds. It's blowing this way at the moment, but it may change through the course of the match. One thing's for sure, the anglers are dotted around now. We're not going to know where the fish are going to come from, but it's going to be a really interesting event. And this is it, round two. We kick off as Jason Lebosque, the current race leader, dips into the draw bowl there. He's on Adams six straight away. Andy Kinder there says it's all over. That's a good peg. For those of you unfamiliar with match fishing, basically what's happening at the moment is all of the anglers walk down to the draw bowl and pull out a number that is randomly allocated. And that number corresponds with a peg number around one of the two lakes. The full contingent will come down this line, draw their number, and that will be their home for the rest of the day. The format of this competition is, of course, eight sections of 10. So. Not only are they fishing one big 80 peg match for a thousand pounds, but they're also fishing eight smaller 10 peg matches. And that's for points for the overall title 
four rounds. The winner will be the angler at the end of those four rounds with the least points. And in the event of a tie break, it will be the least points and the greatest combined weight over the four competitions. John Arthur there, multiple champion coming through. He's just taken his peg number. And it looks like he's on Adams, peg 36. Of course, John Arthur has won this competition three times already. Here's one of the venue favourites just about to register in, Dave Burley. One match this up here last time out. He's a venue regular. He knows this lake very, very well indeed. Had a quick chat with him before and he feels that Ireland, low numbers are probably the better place to be for the match win. And it looks like he's drawn 33 on Adams. Not necessarily where he thought the main number of fish were, but Dave is always going to be dangerous. There's a few gasps when you drew this peg. Yeah, uh, I don't really know the venue, so obviously it doesn't really mean a lot to me. It, it's nice to have a bit of room. It's tightly pegged around the rest of the lake, so I'm hoping with that little bit of room. There's been a lot of grass cut. Uh, must have been the last few days. It looks like they've took the top off the rushes and everything, which has gone into the lake. Um, and in my experience, a lot of the fish generally like to mill around under that. So as you can see down the margin to the left, there's a lot of, so there has been a lot of fish movement, but whether they stay there or not, it remains to be seen. You're on half decent peg here, aren't you? I would have definitely put my tattle on it, 100%. Um, point of that island is always good. If I had my choice, I'd probably want to be that way or that way a little bit either side, because point sometimes too near, but it's a great peg. I mean, I think this one and 21's probably won more matches on here over the last 20 years than any other peg, so I would have put my tattle on it. A lot of fish there. Whether they're going to feed, uh, who knows, we'll find out when we start fishing, but I would have definitely took it at start, and now we're a... Uh, in fact, in a big match, I've never drawn this side on Ireland, so it's my first time ever. I've pleasure fished it a lot, but I've never actually drawn this side on the island in a big match, so I'm quite looking forward to it. Kayleigh, big section this. Yeah, there's some good anglers in it. I think I've drawn right end, lovely looking peg, being told it's another good peg, so we're drawing and working lately. This is the flyer, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. Let's hope um, it lives up to its expectations, but I've seen a few fish around, so I'm confident I'm going to catch. What's your starting plan? Um, probably start short again, see what's going on and try to get down the edges as quickly as possible because that's why I'm going to put a weight together. It's supposed to be a good little channel this by the bridge as well. Yeah, I think the fish congregate around it. It's like a safe area, so hopefully I'm told there's fish here all the time. So. Three times champion John Arthur next door to you on your right. Yeah, he's, uh, he's all right, he's John. Known John a while. Um, really good angler. I'll be keeping my eye on him, but hopefully fish will be this end and I should beat him, hopefully. John, this is the place to be, I believe. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I don't come here often enough to know that. I've only fished this lake once before. Um, we fished on the point last year, and it, it, to be honest, the whole lake fished really, really poor last year. So, um, but it looks nice. A um, bit of grass on the surface, a few uh, interesting coloured fish swimming around and stuff. So, uh, but it's a tough section. I think we're in a split section with Little Adams behind us as well, and the likes of Dan White and Ben Lawrence and I've got young Kaylee next door as well so uh, no pressure. <laughs> Absolutely she's on fire as well at the yeah, moment. Yeah yeah very very good angler so uh, you know so um, yeah it's great to see uh, um, some girls in the uh, in the competition as well.
points, but either side of those are very, very good areas. And Tommy Pickering's on one of those. He's on the pirate peg, which is a very, very, very successful peg. There's the start. The match is about to go underway. Where's your money? You have to go with Ireland because it has produced many of the winners. You've got Tommy Pickering on there. You've got Dave Burley on there. He's very close to a peg where he won one of the big matches mm. recently. He knows the lake like the back of his hand. He is the resident expert. Yeah, isn't he? if he's got the fish in front of him, Dave Burley is a bagger and he will catch a big weight. Well, let's have a look at Jason now and he's starting short. He's on his top five. Just going to be seeing what's out there. And I think a lot of guys these days tend to start off like this don't they short try and catch what's directly in front of them before looking out around the the rest of the peg yeah i mean this sort of this gives you a few options so the the first option is you you're not going to scare any fish that are further out look at that there's one directly yeah, underneath I mean, him you, right in front there you can see how they are i mean they're coming right up on the top and they're in amongst all of this grass because that's where there's some food particles and stuff and that's what they want. I've got to ask the question, why didn't they ever go for that? Because I would have thought that would that looks catchable to me. Yeah, sometimes... He's gonna, they are, look, he's, he's going to try, try it. He's going to try it, but... Um, Get spook off the pole now, you watch. Oh, is it going to go, this? No, you see... Oh. You see, that's what can happen, though. You can get sort of a little bit wrapped up in that and then you waste an hour catching one fish. Yeah. Stu listing our next door to Jace Le Bosque. Starting off on exactly the same tactic, top five. Yeah, Stuart, yeah Stuart's doing it a little bit differently because Jason's just got a tiny little pot on the end of his pole and he's just tapping in a few pellets. But Stuart is uh, actually throwing the pellets. You can see he hasn't got a pot on. We've got a fairly steady start going on at the moment. There's nobody really setting the world alight, although just on the far bank up there, we can see Ben Lawrence. Yeah, he's, he's caught that top kitten three, so short. Same line as these two guys in front of us are fishing. Uh, I saw him catch a few small fish, and then he's uh, he's hooked what looks like a proper fish. He's, and Stuart's just pulled out of one on his short line. So, yeah, I mean, usual commercial stuff, Robert. I mean, it's it's always a slow start, pretty much. Leaving him a bit of a merry dance over there. We can see him on the far side. Yeah, he's he's had it. He had it at the net once, and it's obviously uh, it's not playing ball that one. But um, these fish, as we see from all the weights, usually can be very very important. You know, so you've got to make sure you land what you hook. I tell you what, I fished up here yesterday, and they are absolutely bionic. Carla Betteroli there into a fish on the pellet wagon. And Obviously, that change of tactics has paid off straight away. He's only been doing it for a couple of minutes, and that has worked wonders. Yeah. He was on his top five. It's not a massive fish, but no. it's a fish, and he's going to be happy with that because yeah, he's yeah. now in the race. Yeah, looks like a Carasio. He's fishing about two, two and a half foot deep. But there's fish out in front of, of, of both these anglers here, just in the ripple in the water. You can see the... Uh, it's just disturbed one with his float there, and... But it's nice to catch them early on this method because then you can stick at it and, and start to try and make it work. Looking at Ben Lawrence, he's had a fish on for a reasonable period of time. He's just landing it. It doesn't look as big as I thought it was, actually. He's, uh, that pulled him around a fair old way. But it's a carp on the bank and it's definitely going to get him on the score sheet. He's had a couple of small ones already. But other than that, it's a fairly quiet start. We just had to drop in on John Arthur partway through the match to see one of the stunning fish that he'd started to catch. Not something you see very often in the UK match scene, but just look at that. This is something you don't see very often, Jason Lebosco off his box again and he's obviously not settled with what he's doing because he's not even set his pellet waggler up and he's seen what's been going around the pond and he's gone and dug it out straight away. Yeah, it's amazing. Sometimes you just get, as we discussed earlier, you set up your stall to do one thing or two things or three things and none of them are right. And and now what ha what's happened is Jason's seen exactly what we've seen. Everybody's catching on the pellet waggler or well, certainly the fish that are being caught are being caught on a pellet waggler. So he's been forced to get off his box for a second time and go and get a pellet waggler. Yeah. Probably driving him mad because he's thinking, oh, what's going on? But well, it's unsettled him for the first hour. That's a, you know, yeah, that's a yeah. key. And it's going to take him 15 minutes to set in. 
Yeah. So you know his match is now going to be a four-hour match rather than a five-hour match. Yeah. But he's good enough to be able to do that. Yeah. Ben Bell up there on the split bank between Ireland and Adams, white shirt. Yeah. Pull a kit in hand. That yeah. can mean only one thing. Yeah. Fish on. It's a nice peg that. Um, one of the, the favoured pegs on this lake. Um, prior to the draw and um, Ben Bell haven't seen him catch an awful lot but we can see he's got quite a lot of room uh, and that might be to his advantage later on in the match massive amount of space down there to the right hand side that willow yeah. will attract fish as well and it's exactly the opposite corner to where Jason Lebosque is sat yeah. they've both got lovely weeping willows in in the corners here but Jason has got all of the grass and the breeze blowing in Whereas Ben has got a nice clean margin. He's got that fish in now. Yeah. He's got a nice clean margin up there, no breeze at all. And you know yeah. what? You never know where they're going to be. We think they like the grass. They might be the opposite end. Look it over at Dan White now, yeah. and you'll see four lads very, very close to each other mm -hmm. all along that section there. But Dan White seems to be the mover and shaker. And this is a split section. There are five on this lake and five on the lake behind, two of whom are Kayleigh Smith and also John Arthur. We've not been around to see them yet, but this is a different section to the one that Jason and Stu and Mark Roger, etc., are in. And it seems to be a slightly steadier match over here at the moment. There's a few fish being caught, but nothing massive. Although Dan, I think now, has probably had three fish. It's neck and neck between him and Dan next door, isn't it? They're, they're yeah. pretty close, those two. Yeah, I think Ben Lawrence's fish are a bit bigger. That's what's probably just about got him ahead. Oh, and look at that. There is a response straight away from next door. He's called a carrot. Yeah, look at that. That is, that is that's a, a proper, proper goldfish, that's a, that's that a one. a proper carrot, that one. And while we see that one being netted, what we see mm. next door on the right-hand side of the picture as we look at it is a pole being slowly retrieved back because he's in again. And this is going to be a ding-dong battle between these two. Yeah, Dan White's gone straight out on the shallow rig and he's had one straight away. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's looking like a good battle there. Right, the fish are definitely switching on now because Stuart List has got one on the waggler and I can see three or four anglers that are just just landed fish or are playing fish so game on now they've I settled think, in yeah I think they're starting to settle now and um, not as much activity on the top which is sometimes a good sign but Stuart's got another decent fish on you know, it's been quite an interesting match, this, because a lot of the time we see a little spurt right to the beginning and then it dies down for the second hour. Yeah. It's been the other way around here, isn't it? It's been a bit of a slow start and it's actually picking up for the second hour. Yeah. Go on, Stu. Yeah. He's Stu's, got it. Yeah, Stuart's caught that a little bit deeper on, um, on one of his rocket floats. Um, oh, if he can get it in the net. Cool. Blimey. Crikey, it's really having a little it's old in, do, it's isn't out, it? It's in, it's in, yeah. it's there. That's it. Don't break your landing next to you. Yeah, that worries me again. So he's got, a, he's got 22, Easily. 23 pound now. Yeah, leading the section by a, by a reasonable by a way at the moment. now. So just looking down there at the man with the white cap, that is Scott Puddy. Of course, he was first in section last time out. Huh. And he's having a bit of a scrap with the man next door to him, Matt Pilly, who's on the pellet waggler, and he's got one on as no, well. He's just, Matt's just oh, pulled out of that one. Of it's a shame. But uh, yeah, Scott's fishing uh, 40 and a half metres on the pole, shallow and... Uh, He's catching a few fish, and it looks like a good fish, that. Um, Matt was into a fish on the waggler, so, uh, but not anymore. But there's obviously a few fish here. They're having a bit of a neck-and-neck -neck battle, actually, these two at the moment. And there's quite a few fish on the surface out in front of them, and it's definitely an up-in-the-water day today, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be an up-in-the-water and then down-the-edge day. I can, Whoa, I can... there we go. It's on a run. Look at that. <laughs> He shoved the end of his pole on there quickly and followed that out as fast as possible, but he's managed yeah. to hang on to it. I thought he was going water skiing then with that. <laughs> he, he, was, he was following that out that quick, he looked like a pole vaulter then. <laughs> and there's Adam Playford on the other side of the lake. He's in. Just see the white of the pole tip. As he starts to get it under control and brings it a little bit closer. Looks like he's about to net yeah, that. Yes, he's got, he's got, got it. Net, so good fish and that too, looks that. a good fish. Yeah, that looks a seven, eight, seven pounder at least. Back with Scott. He's down on the puller kit now. He looks like he's got it in control, but he's been in, out, up, down. Yeah, it's a bit of an in-out, shake-it-all-about job, this one. He's had it in three times. This is 
I think this is the fourth time he's had it in. And as soon as it comes in close to him, it just seems to shoot off and he's uh, he's got to chase it out again. It's so. on the top there, just in front of yeah, him now. I, I think, think he's probably is... winning now. So, uh, yeah, it's on the top. Be interesting to see how big a fish it is. I'll just see it on the surface there, just about to come forwards. Has he got it under control now? He's got the tip down. Wouldn't surprise me if it's not hooked in the tail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is the critical moment now. Having invested all that time in playing this fish, he wants it in the Ooh, net. Oh, that's a big no, fish. That's a big that's fish. A big that's fish square in the mouth. Look at that. Oh, yeah, that's a well done. Well done. Yeah, that's a two-hander. Yeah, that's ten pound all Easily. day. Easily. Oh, he's going to be uh, pleased with that. That's yeah. worth the effort. Pole vault puddy from now on. Pole vault puddy. Yeah. He, he was there, pole in the air. Looked like he was running and taking a charge at the ten-meter jump. Yeah. Let's have a little look at what we thought was going to be a battle, but it's turned into a bit of a non-entity at the moment. And this is the scrap between England international Kaylee Smith, who's got a back to us there, and three times UK champ John Arthur, who's to the left of the picture, and both of them are having a bit of a mare today, not too much happening at all. No, it's pretty quiet there, and I mean, we're only two hours in at the moment, and kaylee has gone down the edge. Um, she's obviously getting bites, and I have seen her catch a fish down there, but there's not an awful lot going on. Looked a good peg as well, though, but it just doesn't seem to be happening for them, and of course, this is a really interesting section. We've got Adams, as we know, one big lake, but it's split into two. There's a channel going underneath the dynamite bridge and we have five anglers on the one side and five on the other. Four that we can see on the points, yeah. fishing with their backs to each other. They're in the same section. So effectively they're fishing two different lakes, albeit that it's the same lake and it's quite a complicated thing, yeah. but they're not in a line. No, they're not in a line. Um, and obviously in that section we've got four end pegs. Yes. So four out of the ten anglers, 40% of the anglers have got a probably what you would say was a better chance well, than the you, others. If you consider the lads on each end as well, you've probably got five end pegs because these yeah. lads are in there too. Yeah, so half the section's got end pegs. Could be a right battle, yeah, really. Absolutely, but it seems to be the other side of Adams, big Adams, that's producing the better fish, and we're seeing a lot more coming yeah. out of that side. In fact, we've seen a couple of double hookups and some right ding dong battles on that side, whereas this seems to be the let's watch paint dry section. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it seems everybody's doing something a little bit different, um, and you're just seeing the odd fish getting caught, really. But as we've said, you know may play in for a really good, exciting finish to the match. On the Bank, proudly sponsored by Clearwater Fisheries. Angling in the Northwest. On the Bank, proudly sponsored by Clearwater Fisheries. Angling in the Northwest. halfway stage now and we've just seen Adams Lake so far but it's been a really interesting start to the competition. Slow beginning, all right for some, not so good for others. Let's look at Jason Lebosque and Stu Lister next door to each other. Jason's had a stinker. Yeah, had a real nightmare start. Um, the grass that's obviously floated into the corner has caused him all sorts of problems. Off his box twice, changed his methods three or four times yeah just a proper bad start yeah, for him didn't really go for him whereas Stu Lister he went off to a bit of a dream start started off very similar to Jace but changed very quickly went on the pellet wag just led the way then didn't it yeah pellet wag had three fish for we reckoned about 22 pound maybe a little bit more um, and he's still catching a few fish on that so yeah good start for him he's going to be in one. contention there isn't he yeah. yeah he will be yeah he will yeah. be yeah well let's look elsewhere around Adams as well Scott Puddy seems to be the man on the other lake he really is taking a commanding lead there whether he'll be able to continue with that run rate it'll be interesting to see he's been catching some big fish shallow um, and then you've got adam playford around that area as well catching the same exactly the same method so you've got a few in the hunt but scott puddy probably are leading the way in that section absolutely we've got the long section on the riverbank as well just 10 guys and girl in a straight line 
and it seems to be a battle at the moment and it's a battle of attrition they're not catching a lot but it's between Ollie Scotton for me and Emma Pickering too yeah to be fair Oliver Scothorn and uh, Emma have been catching on the pellet waggler um, they've got two end pegs in that section so that it's been a slow section that one change. but at the end it might suddenly all change Rob let's have a look at the spit as well because that's a really interesting one you've got five facing the one way five on the other side we've seen Kaylee we've seen John Arthur we've seen that one line that seemed to be the favoured area however it's the other side that's fishing well isn't it yeah the uh, the side Little Adams uh, that's the one that's fishing Ben Lawrence Dan White both fishing shallow and short alternating and catching plenty of fish those two so yeah that section the two halves can't see each other, so they've just got to get on with it. Um, yeah. And to be fair, it, it could throw up a weight for one of those anglers. The big question now, though, is what's happening on this side of the complex? What's happening on the island lake? This is where we think there's going to be even bigger weights. Time to find out. Well, here's that man again, Dave Burley. And once again, he's into fish. He's absolutely devastating on this lake, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, he knows it inside out, Dave, so he knows what's going to work. What's going on uh, there? He's got know, he seems to have lassoed a roach <laughs> in his loop. <laughs> I've never seen that in my life before. That could only happen today, Burley. He's going to try and <laughs> that, like, that is unbelievable. Oh, it's, it's come gone. out. Oh, it's come off. Oh, hold on. No, it's, no, it's not. No, it just slipped out. It's, it's wrapped round. I reckon it's, it's on another bit of line, that fish. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It is. And it's got wrapped round his... Uh, Does that count? Can he weigh that one in as well? I think he can mm, if he gets it in. And, uh, yeah, I think probably a steward's on that. and I, mean, I don't think it's going to make a massive difference, a two-ounce roach in the scheme of things, but uh, an, interesting, uh, an interesting catch nonetheless. Barley's in next door. Um, Dave and Chris are going to be having a battle here because uh, one, they're in the section, which is what it's all about, and they're both catching on the same line, shallow, so it's going to be a bit of a ding-dong this for the last couple of hours. Isn't it brilliant when you're in that match situation where you've got somebody that's competitive next door to you? You're almost going fish for fish. It is a proper slugfest there by two heavyweights. Yeah. You know, both of them know exactly what they're doing. They're both experts at catching carp. And it's getting tense here at Hayfield. Things are starting to hot up. The battle is really starting to rage now. You're tempted to st stick the net at them and you can knock them off the hook quite easily. But uh, he's just giving it a bit more. Here it comes, there it comes, and he's got it. Yeah. And that's a result for him. Yeah, it's a decent fish. Six, seven pound in the net. He's a man that we saw last time out doing quite well as well. This is Chris Donovan, a fellow carp angler, or should I say former carp angler. He's turned to the dark side. He's, uh, he's found the love of match fishing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, depends which way you look at it, Rob, I suppose. Yeah. But very, very capable yeah. and successful carp angler, this one. Yeah. Moved over to the box, as quite a few of the lads have done, actually. We've seen mm. this with some of the lads from Carp Team England. When they are tight on time, they want to compete, they're desperate to compete, and they actually get the boxes out and have a bash up with mm. some of the key match anglers, too. There we go. Nearly there. That's oh, a nice fish, nice yes. little. Well done, Chris. That yeah. looks like it's double figure. Yeah, that's a nice fish. Good angling. Carp angler bag in the big ones. <laughs> and... Uh, Chris Barley's in again. He's gone straight out and got a fish straight on. Um, that was very quick, that one, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that wasn't. Quick, quick bite there. Yeah. And we all, if Chris lines them up properly, then uh, he can put a good weight together very quickly. Once again, you can see he's just taking his time. He's just easing the fish in, not pulling them too hard, because sometimes if you pull them too hard, they just pull hard back and they'll just come off. So he's just taking it easy. That one seems to be coming in a little easier than the last one. In five minutes, he's got 12 pound in the net and that one's up and in, bang, job done. 12 pound in two bites. Great display of angling. Well, Dave's just come down the edge to have a little look on the spot that he was putting his pot mm -hmm. and his water in earlier. He's just had a little put in down there to see if there's anything there as he's had a quiet spell out in the middle. And that's the result, look. Mm. One, what looks like a perch, was it? Yeah, not what you want. And this is Nick Speed. Another man with a big cup of ground bait just going down the edge. It's going to be dumped in. 
Yeah, you really fancy this peg because it's got loads of room. Big space, isn't it? Yeah, them and Dave Burley have got like almost like a an acre of water to go out here, so you'd really fancy the edges would be pretty good late on, so... There we go. Big slap on the surface. Yeah. Similar sort of tactic to Dave. Make a bit of disturbance, yeah. get that ground bait going in. This is his fourth pot now. Yeah, he's not messing about, Nick. Is that desperation and all or nothing tactic now, or is it um, confident that there could be some big fish around? I think if you're going to do it, you might as well do it properly. There's no point. There's big fish in here, Rob, so, you know, they're not. that's not going to make a dent on them. Five pots of ground bait. I'm sure if Nick goes over it and catches one, he'll he'll put another two in straight after he's caught one. So next door to Nick Speed, we've got Craig Meadows, very very capable angler, and he's in a very tight section down here. Nick Speed, Tommy Pickering, Craig Meadows, my word, what a lineup! But it's Craig that's got just a little bit of an edge at the moment. He's had a steady afternoon. Kept going on the pellet wag. Yeah, that looks a big fish, that. It's giving him a good old pull around, that one. Big fish o'clock now, isn't it? An hour of the match left to go. This is where the prep is going to show. Yeah. This is where, if you've done your homework and you've got your notes right, this is where your tactics will pay off. Yeah, that's a proper fish. We'll have a chance then. Just bringing it up. It's fishing about three, three and a half foot deep on the pellet waggler. And that is giving him a proper pull. See the bend on the rod, but it's doing a good job. And up she comes, and in the net. And he'll be happy with that. Is it going to be two hands or one hand? It's one That's hand. One hand. Eight pound, nine pound fish, though. So coming down the line, we've got Carl Cotton, Chris Donovan, John Dryden. And then just to the left of the life boy, as we look at it, we've got Tommy Pickering. Tommy Pickering fancied this peg earlier. He was uh, he was quite pleased. He said he'd put his tackle down on it. Yeah, these um, those pegs in the middle, opposite the uh, the middle of the island, are pretty uh, favoured pegs. Um, I mean, Dan Black won Fishermania final along there, fishing shallow on the pole. So they've got some form. Those pegs. Let's just have a little look at Nick Speed now. He's venturing down his near side margin for the first time. He's potted in seven big pots of ground bait. He's just resting his pole tip on the platform in front of him, just taking the pressure off his arms. And he's going to know pretty quickly if there's a fish down there. He must fancy it. Yeah, you, you would fancy it. There's plenty of room there. It's just a matter of whether they're uh, they're willing to feed there. I can see movement in front of the peg. Yeah. Oh, he's had a bite there, that's for sure. And there's definitely carp down there at the moment. Yeah. Saw a little bit of movement on the water just in front of that platform and I reckon if we could get a bit closer we'd see a tail up down there and he's going to be in a, a race now with himself. He's going to want to get a bait on there as quickly as possible and his name is Speed. It's Speed by name, Speed by nature because when he gets into them, my God, he's fast. Concentration on Nick's face, he's like a heron just leaning over, staring down that pole. There will be the slightest tip of the bristle he just sticking out. Moved a millimetre. It's really. like someone sprayed him with super glue, isn't it? <laughs> this is making grippy. Oh, he's moved. He's moved. No, he's he's reaching behind. He's after a fag. No. Not taking his eyes off the water there. He's reaching around for something. He's, uh, oh, he's found it. There you go. Yeah, checking pellets. a couple of pellets out the front there. So, baiting up without looking. Mm. Oh, oh, and there we go. That's that's a carp. That's what we were waiting yeah, to see. a decent one as well. Yeah, he's got it on the top kit now, so... Well, we saw Scott Buddy do that a few times earlier, and it yeah, went back it out went again, back, and he yeah. turned into a pole vaulter, and to get the old mm -hmm. full length back out again. And it's very, very interesting, because the time that it's taken Nick to get that bike, Craig got one on the pellet waggler next door. Well, let's have a look how quick Nick can get this one in. Yeah, he's getting it. If you can get them really quick, just the element of surprise. Yeah, bang, sometimes turn it around, you can just on. kid him into the net. Yeah. But you only get one chance to do that. Um, you can see like how now he's got the pole nice and low and they come up on the top, but... He's got it. Oh, yeah, it's a good fish, that. good fish, that. Good fish. 
Yeah, we just had to let it go again. And it wants to go back down that edge. He's desperately going to want to keep it out of there as well because there's time for another bite down there straight away with feeding fish going on that bait. Where there's one, there's going to be more. Oh, and yeah. Definitely. I'd be interested to see if this is a ghosty because there was a ghosty cruising around just below the surface, just on the edge of where the bait went in. And, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if it wasn't that same fish coming back in again because it was quite clear that there was one there to begin with that had a bit of a whiz around. And it looked to me like it was turning around and coming back. Look at that, it is the ghosty. I'm convinced that's the fish we saw a moment ago. It looked... Yeah. It came and had a sniff, it disappeared, and now it's yeah. come back in again. fishing the pellet waggler and he's catching and uh, Nick speed down the edge and he's catching so just shows you like quality fishery you can catch on all different methods absolutely slightly more controllable on the pellet waggler I think you know these these bigger fish yeah sir I prefer they certainly are um, obviously you've got a reel you've you've got the line you've got uh, the bend in the rod they're all helping you Whereas the only thing you've got with the pole is the elastic. Um, but as I said, you know, look, Nick's had a fish, but he's putting more ground baiting down the edge. Uh, got he's got one. it. Yeah. And that's a nice fish. Yeah, that's a very nice fish. Matt Culpin there has got a fish on. We just see him to the left of the shot. Dave Wood. Slightly in front of him, the man in black, he's had a good run so far, caught quite a few fish. He's had a very, very good midsection of this competition, but he seems to have slowed down a little bit now. Yeah, he was, uh, Dave was catching well on the, um, on the waggler, but he's slowed a bit now. I think it's probably because the fish are starting to come down the edge, which is what we've seen in quite a few of the pegs. Um, but they're quite hemmed in here, so there's not a lot of edge capabilities for them to fish, a lot of them. But uh, yeah, he's caught that shallow on the pole. He's got Pem right in the other side of him. He was also fishing oh, shallow. There we are. Look at that, Dave. We were just saying that he hasn't caught anything for yeah. a while. And lo and behold, he's into one yeah. straight away. And he's fishing the feeder up against the island at the moment, which is something that not many other people are doing. No, a lot of people have gone on the pole shallow option, which is probably fair because a lot of the fish we've seen have been, been up in the water. But... Uh, yeah, it's game on wherever we're looking at the moment around yeah. the lake. There seems to be fish being played and this last hour is always going to be very exciting. But at the moment, we're looking at Dave Wood. He's got Tommy Pickering on the one side of him, Matt Culpin on the other. Both Matt and Dave are playing fish and this is going to be a very interesting section. I know I said it earlier, but these fish are absolutely bionic at the moment. They really, really are. I had a bit of a dabble last night and, you know, you hook them and they are just off. And you think you get them under control absolutely not the case no, they I are think post hanging on. spawning i think they've always got that bit of more in them haven't they so there we go matt's landed his yeah dave's is in the edge under the tip it's on a fairly short line now yeah it's leaning out and that one that one that matt's got looks like it's uh, it's a good upper single knocking on the door towards double figures let's see what dave's just about got his on the top now just about to land his fish 
Well, if the battle's anything to go by, he's going to be optimistic with that landing net. It looks like it could do with being a few inches bigger. It look, oh, and there it is. It's in the bag. He's got it. Yeah, four, four pound fish. <laughs> and we look at Tommy Pickery now, who's had an absolutely fantastic match in the early stages. He dropped down a little bit. But he's speeding up in the final stages now, come down the edge. He's been on the feed of the majority of the time, out towards the island. Had a great early start. Good first hour, steady second hour. And then it seemed to slow down a little bit for him. Like all good resilient anglers, he's stuck with it. He's back into fish and this looks like a decent one. And it's going to be a very close finish, this, isn't it? Very, very close indeed. These big fish now, sort of six to ten pounds, one fish can make a massive difference. And I'm looking down the line, and there are three or four anglers playing fish as we speak. Yeah. All eyes at the moment on Tommy Pickering, though. Crucial dying stages of the competition. He knows that this is going to count. He knows that he's got to get this in. It's on its way. It's coming up. It's coming up. It's been on for a while. Bated breath yeah, they really are, uh, from the watching crowd. Minutes left on the clock now here. Five, in fact. He's got plenty of time to catch this. The question is whether he's got time to get out and try and tempt another one. But I've just seen its tail and it's a big one. As soon as he's got that fit round. He's on his feet for the netting. Just having a look. It's in very, very safe netting that. And let's have a look at that fish as it comes up. It's a decent one. Nick Speed further down the line doing exactly what we would expect of him at this stage of the proceedings and that is to be playing a fish. There is literally just seconds left oh, he's got of this. One. He's got that one in. To be fair, he's got, yeah. It's a game of time now because if he's quick he might be able to get a put in before the end of the match. It's really, really close now. These are the dying stages. Who is it going to be? We've seen Barley, we've seen Burley, we've seen Speed, we've seen Pickering, we've seen a number of people around both here, the islands, and also big and small Adams. Hayfield has been an absolutely brilliant playing surface for us today. There's been fish coming out all over the place. It's very, very difficult to call, isn't it, Mark? Yeah, it's a real tough one. It's going to be one and two fish. This is going to make a big difference here, certainly, in, even in the sections, not just the winner. Um, so lost fish, people. Are, there's going to be lost fish that are going to cost people. Uh, I've got to say I can't really call it at the moment. I'm leaning towards Burley. I'm favouring speed. I think it's going to be one of those two, having seen the performance they've put in over the last hour and the size of the fish that they've been catching. However, you, there it is. It's gone. Mm -hmm. Do we hear the shout of fish on? Yes, we do. And it's Chris Barley. We were expecting it. Somebody was going to be playing one when the hooter went. And this could be absolutely crucial. The pressure's off him for the time being. He's got 15 minutes to land this fish. He's got it in. And that's it, the work is done. It will now be to the scalesmen and they will tell us exactly what has been caught all the way up and down the banks here at Hayfield. It's been a brilliant, brilliant event all the way through. In the battle on the island, Dave Burley was first to weigh. 65 and 60 will be 125, 15 ounces. Barley next. £60.14 14 on the second way, so the total here, £112.3 ounces, Chris Barley, Dave Burley, 125 15 ounces. Dave Burley claims it on the day. But news was coming in of a late surprise. A furious second half of the match put John Arthur into the limelight with a massive weight. A huge bag of enormous carp rocketed him from nowhere in the first half to match winner in the second. 
And when all the scores were in, the top three on the day looked like this. Three times champion John Arthur in first, 15310 from an unfancied peg. Scott Puddy now charging into second with a second perfect score of the series, 13003. And then venue regular Dave Burley won the battle on the island for third overall with 12515. And then we have the league table. The top eight looks like this. At the top of the pilot, Scott Puddy, two perfect scores. Then Callum Dix, England international. Chris Barley, the regular and expert at decoy. Former champion Pem Writing. Former Fishermania winner Steve Cook. Andy Kinder. Ben Bell. Adam Playford. What a lineup. Tommy Pickering. Oliver Scotthorn. This is going to be a fantastic series. Wow, John, what can we say? The news has just come in and that came from nowhere, didn't it? Well, yeah, after two or three hours, I, I was nowhere and um, I've just it's just flicked a switch in front of me and, uh, and I've suddenly started to catch some big units. It shows how quickly these things can change and you never, ever give up, do you? No, no. Well, <laughs> I was starting to scratch my head wondering, well, what's going on? Why can't I catch? And uh, I've tried everything. I've even switched to lashing in casters for a little bit to see if that worked and that, that didn't work. And... I thought, and the guy to my right started catching on the pellet waggler. I had three on the pellet waggler, but not really going anywhere. And then um, I thought, right, I'll just go back to pellets, and uh, kept plopping it in. Put uh, like an eight mil pellet on the hook a lot of the time, and um, and he just started to go under. So uh, I've mugged a few, seen a few dark shapes. You could only just see a little dark area, and you think, is that a fish? Isn't it? I think they were quite deep, and I've, so I've mugged probably half my fish. Or plopped it into a dark area, <laughs> not not proper mugging, and uh, and the rest have just kept plopping it about two and a half foot deep. You've had some nice ones as well. Mm, I've got a beautiful red and black thing, so uh, one of the nicest fish I've uh, I've caught. I love love catching fish like that. That's what makes this place so special. You never know what what colour the fish is going to be next. Well, that's it. Another round of the UK champs is over, and what a round it's been. We had drama, we had twists. And we had a winner that came, let's face it, from nowhere in the back half of the match. Well done, John Arthur, for a brilliant display. And, of course, to the rest of the podium placers as well. Next up, well, it's decoy. And believe me, that will be an incredible event.